Hey everybody and welcome back, certainly glad you could join me today and welcome to the final episode of this season of Let's Code and we've only really got one thing left to do and we've been sort of talking about it for the last few episodes and that is triggering the dialogues that don't have a person or location trigger so that when you go into a room if there's a dialogue that needs to be played you don't have to click on anything it will just automatically trigger now we've got two criteria within which to check and if we come down to our dialogues you can see we've got the location we've got a person there's no time in this particular engine so we don't have to worry about that but if you are using time you could have that as another criteria to check against but all we're interested in is if you're in the correct location or if no location at all is required and if no person is required now the person is the main thing here because there has to not be a person because if there is a person a participant in a dialogue you have to click on them to trigger the dialogue if it's not required then you have to obviously trigger it automatically whether or not there is a location required is actually rather irrelevant in terms of whether or not it triggers except obviously if it has to be in the library then it has to be in the library but those are the criteria we're going to check against now we come back to our dialogue class and if you remember in the last episode i said that this check function or this check method let's use the correct terminology this is a class method um i remember you remember i said that this was actually largely irrelevant and in one way it's actually true uh, in another way not so much though so all we need to do is we need to check if we are in the correct location and that there is no person required so we can actually get rid of all of this and we don't need npc so what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to do is if self dot participant equals nothing and then we can move into the next line. So the first thing we're checking is that there must not be a participant required. And if that is the case, then we come into the next line, which is if self.location equals location or self.location equals nothing. And those are the only two criteria that we need. Anything else is irrelevant for the time being now we could thinking about it we could check against our chain and sequence as well in the same way that we did previously rather than doing it in the actual game loop so thinking about it let's do that in our functions file we've got character click so what we're going to do is we're just going to copy this bit we don't need that bit Control c and we're going to come back into our classes and into our method which we are writing uh, where the heck did i put that here it is and uh, so what we're saying is if sq so what we need to do is change these cues to self and actually you know what? we're just gonna self dot chain self dot sequence and then that just re removes the extra code there that we wrote in our previous function and this is more than anything just to demonstrate that you can do it just by putting the self dot bits in there so we've got self dot change self dot sequence so what we're saying is if we're in if if there's no participant in this dialogue if we're in the right location or no location is required if we are at the correct sequence of uh, if we're at the right number in that chain of events if it has a chain of events if chain is minus one so what we need to do is say or self.chain equals minus one because that's going to be our uh, non-existent state then we uh, will obviously ignore that as well and then all we have to do in here is return true so <laughs> i'm going to go through this again in baby steps because i realize that my mind is kind of backwards and forwards between things so right so we've 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 accessed the global location variable that's the first thing we've done 
Now we have checked that there is no participant required for this dialog because if there is, we would have to click on that person. If we are in the correct location or the dialog does not require a location, we'll go to the next step. If the dialog is in the correct sequence in the chain of events or there is no chain of events required then we will return true otherwise we are returning false so we've got our checks in place now now all we need to do is actually run a check for all of the dialogues when we enter a room and that is where things can get a little bit messy if we don't know what we're doing so we're going to come into our game loop here so what we're actually going to do is we're going to come into the very top of our loop here and we're going to create a new while loop and we're going to say while length and we're going to have a labels to call I'm going to put that in brackets otherwise that's not going to work while length of that label is greater than zero and then we're just going to put pass in there momentarily while we create this variable. So we're going to hit control C there in our declarations file. We're going to add this variable. So we're going to hit default labels to call equals an empty list. So at the moment, length of that is zero. So the, the, the loop will not do anything. It will just skim over it. Um, so we're going to come back to our script and now we're going to say call expression labels to call item zero and then we're going to remove And we're going to remove item zero. So I had to think about that for a moment there. Right, so what we're doing essentially is we're gonna go through the list of uh, labels and we're gonna call each one and then remove the first one from the list so that it'll only call it once. And to make sure that there's no errors, we're going to say if renpy dot has underscore label labels to call zero oh dear I'm not having a good day for typos today and all we're doing is now is so we're checking that that label exists before we try and call it because if it doesn't exist then it's going to throw up an exception so now we just need to run a check that will populate that list so we're going to come into our functions.rpy and this shouldn't be too complicated. So we're just going to say define dialog trigger check like that. And we're just going to say for Q in dialog Q dot check. So what we need to do is we need to access our global variable dialog and we also need to access I'm having a bad day for typos today labels to call and again we'll come into our declarations and we'll check that that variable name is correct and just to make absolutely sure we're going to control C and control V yep so if for Q in dialog, if Q dot check, then we're going to say labels to call dot append opening brackets Q dot LBL add next line, sorry, which is we need to also clear that so that every time we run the check, it empties that and doesn't just keep appending labels to call equals cool so when we run the dialogue trigger check at the start of our script i 
thinking about it. We also need to put self in here. Otherwise that's gonna throw up a exception. And this is also a property. I nearly forgot that one. That would have been another error. <laughs> so we're rooting them all out. So we come back to our functions and where we call check, we just delete that. And what I'm also thinking we need to do is in the script file, I think what we need to also do is say, if labels to call is not the same as an empty list. So this is one way of doing it. And I'm just thinking about other functions that we could use and another one leaps to mind, which would make life a little bit simpler. So rather than go through this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete all of that. and I'm gonna type pop zero. Now what pop does in a list, it takes this item out in the list. So we're saying pop zero is so the first item in the list. It takes that item, it removes it from the list and it returns whatever it is that's removed. So what we're saying is effectively call this and then delete it from the list all in one fell swoop, which I think you'll agree is a much smarter way of doing it. So I'm glad I had that little brainstorm there. So theoretically now this should all work as intended. So if we come up and we launch our project, so we're going to build our library because the first part of this chain of events is talking to Danielle. So we go to library. So let's go back to our classes just so I can tell you what's going to happen. We're going to go to the library. We're going to click on Danielle and it's going to call this list, this item. As soon as we've done that, theoretically, what should then happen is that this one then triggers. And then theoretically that nothing else should happen until we go back to the kitchen and then the last event should trigger. Theoretically, let's hope that happens. So we've built our library, we go to the library, there's our quintuplets, we click on Danielle, we say that, event one started, brilliant, boom, next event has triggered, magic, click again, fantastic, nothing has happened. So the final piece of the resistance is if we go to the kitchen, boom, the next event has triggered and that's it. And just so that we know what's going on, we go into our zero.rpy and as you can see, there are our events like that. So you can put whatever you want into these and it will do them. And then you can keep creating dialogues and putting them in the chain of events and all that sort of thing. So that's effectively this game's code finished. The pieces are all there. It's just up to you to populate them and to create your assets as you require. And you should be able to create a, you know, pretty awesome game just by using that. I really hope you found this series useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you are interested in supporting this channel and encouraging me to do more of these kind of series, use the Patreon link in the description below, or just join this channel using the button next to the subscribe menu. Smash like, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.